Hi right, guys, uh, just doing a quick video just to show uh, the I made a spindle lock for my milling machine, and um, yeah, just like to show you how it works. And um, yeah, that, that's it there. There's just a spanner that just slides to and fro. I'll just show you. Okay, you just slide it in. And then when you slide that in, it, it locks the spindle. So then um, now you just, you got both hands to, to put in or take out your tooling, and which is a, a lot better. I've had this milling machine now for about three, four years and I've lost count how many times I've dropped um, an end mill. And, and this one here has been dropped and it's got a little chip on it right there on the corner. I don't know if you can see that. So now that I've got the, the spindle lock here, okay, that, that won't happen because I'll have two hands to operate the machine. Anyway, so I'm really happy about it. Um, the other feature that, it's got some, it's got, it does have some features there. Um, this milling machine, it's very common. Um, a lot are sold under different names and stuff. And um, it, they come with a, um, a safety shield where when it's got like a, a switch in it. So if the safe, if the if the screen is open, then the milling machine won't turn on. Well, that was the first thing I took off. It was just used to get in the way, you know what I'm saying? So if you use your safety glass and stuff like that, you don't really need it. So I've taken that off. So and because I've taken that off, I've used the same wiring and I've got a micro switch at the back there. So, so now, if you got the spindle lock spanner engaged, the machine will not turn on. But then when it's disengaged, it turns on. It's a very good safe, it's a very good safety feature because um, you only just gotta tap it a little bit and bang, it turns off. Okay, so it needs to be all the way fully back for it to work. So that, that's pretty good. Because when I very first built the spindle lock, I didn't have the switch on it. And th three or four times, I did turn the machine on when I didn't have, uh, when I didn't have the spanner disengaged. And, and, and it does, you know, it's, just, it's just not good to do that. It just put a bit of strain on the motor. And um, so now I'm really happy that I've, I've used that um, wiring there for, for, with a micro switch so it just stops it being turned on see what well, okay there's no way you can turn that on now but as soon as it's disengaged fully disengaged it will now turn on just a little tap and bang turns off okay so what i'll do um i'll i'll disassemble this just so you can have a better look to see how i actually made this and um, and this here, that there, that there's just the original um, quill lock. And um, so what I did was just um, made the thread a little bit longer and, and drilled a hole in the mounting plate so it can reach the quill. So that's it's got nothing to do with the spindle lock. Yeah, so what I'll do, um, yeah, I'll start pulling it apart and then um, I'll, I'll show you guys uh, how I made this. Okay, so I've pulled it apart. There's the main body here. And this is the piece that's um, that, that mounts to the machine. There's, this, there's the side of the machine. The only, the only, two, the only thing that I've done to, to make my spindle lock the only modification I made to the actual machine is just these two holes. I just had to drill and tap some six mil bolts to, to mount this. So there's only three bolts that mounts this unit to the side. And that middle hole, this hole here, that's for the quill lock that I mentioned earlier, which is this here, this is the quill lock. And that's where that goes. Right. So yeah, so this is the main body, 
And now that I've got it off, I can show you on the other side. There's the micro switch. And I've just used a piece of angle line to clamp that micro switch to the side there. And doing it this way, it gives you bit, lots of play where you can fine tune it. So, so that um, when yeah, you can fine tune it, so the switch just turns on just as it's fully disengaged. Like that, it's just right. so anyway, that's the main body. Um, that there is uh, that bit of rod that's pressed fit into there that's drilled out with a hole there, and that and that's where. And that's where the spring sits in. The spring sits in and then there's a ball bearing that sits there. And that's what holds the spanner in place. There's the spanner there. I made the spanner in two pieces because um, you know, I was too lazy to, to cut that whole shape out. Um, but it turned out to be more work making it in two pieces anyway. So, but anyway, that's, that's just terrible. So it didn't need to be in two pieces is what I'm saying, but it is made in two pieces. And then, um, and that's, and those, and that's, and those two little machined out areas, that's for the ball bearing. It, that holds it, that holds it in the, in the disengaged position. And then when you slide the spanner, that'll be in the engaged position. That way, you know, well, mostly it's more important like when it's disengaged, you don't want it vibrations. You don't want the spanner to creep in towards the spindle. And that, that works really, really well. And the other piece, this is the piece that bolts. Oops, I just dropped the spring. So you got this piece here, that piece there, and then this bolts to underneath, and that's what. Oh, lost the ball bearing as well, and and that's what the spanner slides in. So they're the three main pieces here. Okay, I'm just going to put the camera down into the tripod and I'll, and I'll put this back together again and um, uh, you'll get to see how it assembles and um, hopefully I don't get in the way of the camera but I'll just put the camera down and I'll start assembling it. Okay, that's much better. Now I've got free hands to to do what it is I need to do. Um, guys, I just want to apologize about the, um, it's pretty obvious that I'm pretty new at doing videos and stuff, so I do apologize for the bad quality, but I'm doing my best here. And um, I just thought I'd, you know, I just wanted to share this idea because it may give some people some ideas on how they'll do their spindle lock. So anyway, I'll just, I'll keep going. So I'll start putting this thing back together. Um, I'll put the main, the main body back on this piece here. It just goes up in there. Now, now that I've got the spindle lock, I, I can't work without it. It's it's awesome. Like I said earlier, I've, I've lost count how many times I've dropped a tool or I've dropped stuff like, because you need two hands to, to clamp things in and stuff, so, so yeah, I love it. So yeah, we'll just tighten these up.
Oh, I'm an idiot. These are the wrong bolts. Too long. Those bolts was for this piece. Okay. I thought that was tightening up, bonding them out, and it wasn't tightening it. Okay, uh, I'm probably just a little bit nervous. <laughs> just bear with me, guys. Okay, just give this a go. I'll take that one completely out. I'll get, um, yeah, see, that was too long, and that one there isn't what I needed. Okay, so let me just get that in. This PC was made in two pieces, too. It's just uh, two more of these bolts, just bolts underneath. Okay, that's better. Take this one out. Hopefully you get to see a little bit what I'm doing. Hands are in the way. The other thing I mentioned too is that the micro switch, very common, very, it was very cheap, it was under 20 bucks. Um, it's got the three pins there. So with the three pin micro switch, it's, they, it's like normally open or normally closed. So you're only using two of those pins. So the common one is the one that you can't see that's tucked in underneath there. And then there's two up the top here. The one closest to the camera, that's the one that I use. So therefore, this micro switch needs to be hit for power to go through. And then if you use the other terminal, when the switch is not striked, then you'll get power. I've left that pin there. I could have cut that pin off, but I've left it there. Because if I ever did take this off and I still wanted to use my machine, I'll just use that terminal and therefore even though the micro switch is not engaged my machine will work so you yeah, know that's that's what that is so it's a very common micro switch like i said they call them normally open or normally closed I'll just put that in now so that one there is the common one and then this one up the higher one the one that we want all right Um, so now I'm going to get the um, I'll get the spring and the bearing. This is the part that's a little bit fiddly because I've got to hold that up there. Get the clamp, uh, get the spanner in position. Have the bearing in that little divot. Just hold that. Get this piece up like that. As soon as I get one bolt in, it's fine. So I'm just having to clamp that now. Get that bolt done up. So now it's fine. We have spring. And the ball bearing's not going to go anyway. So I'll get these springs in, screws in. I 
I've only done a couple of uh, videos, so eventually I'll get a lot better at it. Probably five, ten years time I'll be a lot better. But I just wanted to share this because, um, like I said, it may help someone out with an idea on how they're going to do their spindle lock. And for this type of machine, which is quite common, you just don't get a lot of area to to work with. What with the spindle and the, especially the quill. So anyway, just make sure that lines up easily and freely. Yeah, that's good. Now that I'm happy with that, I'll just tighten them right up. So as you so now you can see what I mean. Like with that bearing in the, in the spring there, that holds that in position really good. There's no way that's going to vibrate and move in towards the spindle at all. It's quite good. And um, this is the quill, the quill lock. Just screws up into there. That locks the quill. Okay, cool. Um, what I'll do, I might, um, I might reposition the camera, and I'll actually just show you like me just taking the tool in and out. I'll just reposition this camera. Hold on. Okay, so now I'll just show you. Um, if I was just say if I was using this machine and um, I wanted to take the tooling out, engage my spanner, uh, get the um, collet spanner, I've got two hands now, so I can hold the actual tool, loosen that, and out she comes. Uh, there's no risk or danger of having the end mill drop into your workpiece or, or your vice, whatever. Like I said earlier, I've, it's happened before. I had to spin the lock and I've actually chipped, chipped one of the corners there. But won't be happening anymore, so that's great. And um, yeah, so. Working on the machine, whatever. Putting it back in, same thing, only need can hold that with my hand and then nip it and then tighten it up. It's excellent. Uh, now I'm only gonna, you only need the, the one tool because the uh, spanner is permanently there, ready to go. So that's excellent. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope, uh, hope you um, maybe is giving you some ideas on, on, on spindle lock for your machine. Um, just leave any comments, um, negative or positive, and, and I'm happy to overread because at the end of the day, you know, I'm new to this. I'm only a hobbyist machinist, so, you know, if there's something that I could have improved on or, or whatever, I'm happy to hear, hear, hear from you. Okay, see you later.